UM Star Series, uh, making impact through your research. So this morning we have um, excellent uh, star speaker with us this morning, uh, Professor Emeritus Dato Norma Manso. And uh, Professor Dato Norma Manso is now the director for the Social Wellbeing Research Center at the University of Malaya. Um, allow me to just give an introduction about uh, Professor Emeritus Dato Norma Manso. Uh, so Prof. Norma Manso is the director of the Social Wellbeing Research Center, uh, a position that uh, Prof. Norma has hold since 2013. And Prof. Norma was also appointed the secretary of the National Economic Advisory Council at the Prime Minister's Department. And this was within 2009 to 2011, after being the Dean of the Faculty of Economics and Administration from April 2004 to June 2009. Prof. Uh, uh, Norma Manso was also an advisor and a consultant uh, to various organizations, which include the National Institute of Public Administration, uh, the Sarawak Economic Development Corporation, the United Nations Development Program, the World Bank, the International Labour Organization, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or more well known as OECD, and the European Union. As an academic, uh, Professor Dato Norma has also written extensively in books and also in scholarly journals. And uh, recently, she was awarded the Emeritus Professorship by the University of Malaya in October 2018. Uh, Professor Dato Norma is also an academic fellow at USF, University of Science Malaysia, a fellow of the Academy of Science Malaysia, and the president of the Malaysian Economic Association. So it's an uh, absolute pleasure to have uh, Prof. Uh, Dato Norma Manso with us this morning. And I am Donny Adams, and I will be your moderator for this morning. So before we proceed, um, I would just like to inform um, all our uh, uh, participants this morning, if you were to have any questions, uh, feel free to post those questions in the chat and uh, we will communicate across uh, those questions to Prof. Dr. Norma Manso. Uh, if there is a time, we will also permit you uh, to ask those questions verbally personally to Prof. Dr. Roma Mansu as well, all right? And I also ask the cooperation to everyone here, if you could mute your microphone, uh, so not to disturb any flow uh, during the presentation. And uh, uh, most importantly, to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation by uh, Professor Dr. Roma Mansu. Okay, uh, and I personally am looking forward uh, to this presentation. So. Um, over to you, Prof. Uh, Dr. Norma Manso. Firstly, we thank you for your time and we thank you for accepting our invitation. And most importantly, all of us here are excited to hear from you. Over to you, Prof. Dr. Norma. Pleasure, uh, uh, Dr. Donny Adams. Um, yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, and and for, for such a kind introduction, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, uh, everyone, yeah. viewers. Um, it is my pleasure to uh, speak with you this morning and especially to share uh, what we do at the center and, and uh, how, um, um, how we were established and uh, what are our mandates yeah, for, for our establishment. Um, the um, Social Wellbeing Research Center is an endowed center. Yeah? It is an EPF uh, endowment, endowment fund. Uh, to support research in, in social security and old age financial protection. So we started way back in 2008, yeah, when um, issues about old age protection, issues about aging, uh, the demographic shift and all that were not getting that much attention. So, um, and uh, the Faculty of Economics, uh, we do have uh, economics uh, graduates who are more interested in banking, finance, but not necessarily issues uh, on social protection, welfare economics, uh, and also the uh, also labor economics. Yeah, so it was not easy to get students to be interested and to get researchers 
to be interested in social security. And, and in the past, it was referred to as social welfare. And uh, uh, therefore, it's supposed to be less important uh, considering or compared to the more um, urgent uh, um, issues like growth uh, and all that. Yeah? And old age protection was not, very, uh, uh, not, not much in the public discussion either because uh, our economy was at the um, uh, almost full employment. Yeah? So everybody has a job. People who retire without retirement income uh, can work and their income is not bad. Yeah? So those were uh, the, the scenario um, until um, a few years ago yeah? where uh, um, you can get a job if you are retired, although you may not have. A, so pension, yeah? what pension means is retirement income. So I would refer to pension in, in, in this talk as retirement income, not government pension. Yeah? So in other countries, it is also referred to as pension. What it means is, is retirement income. So for Malaysia, it was not, it, uh, was not important. It was not a concern. However, EPF had this uh, forward thinking uh, that Malaysia is undergoing or was undergoing this demographic shift. And many Malaysians are not covered under the present, under the then yeah, social protection system when, uh, when the idea of the research center was established in 2008. And to lead research. Yeah? So when we first started, it was at the Faculty of Economics, excuse me, Faculty of Business Administration and Accountancy. Of course, we are together now, these two faculties that used to be one, split in 1997 and now we're back together again yeah in 2021 uh, we are one faculty now uh, but when it was established it was under the faculty of business administration and to lead research in order to give direction in social security research there was a, a chair was established a chair would mean that a professor very renowned very uh, experienced and knowledgeable in the field of old age of financial protection is to lead the research and the team at the Faculty of Economics uh, uh, at the University of Malaya and also in Malaysia, yeah? because then not just uh, uh, at the UM uh, uh, that we do not have a center or many students working on social security, but it's in the country, it's, it's the void that we have uh, uh, in, uh, uh, as a nation. Yeah, so, um, in March um, 2020, 2011, uh, Social Security Research Center was transferred to the Faculty of Economics and Administration. Yeah? And I became the director uh, in 2013. And in 2017, we changed the name to Social Wellbeing Research Center simply to reflect uh, the real areas, the real activities that we cover. Yeah? because social security would only cover the social insurance aspect of research. Yeah? And yet the social protection as, as a concept or as a framework, it has three main components, the social assistance, which is more of social welfare. Yeah? So now you have the Bantuan Keluarga Malaysia. Yeah, that's under social assistance. And social security is the second uh, type or second category of social protection, where it would include the EPF, the, the co-op, yeah, the government uh, pension, um, LTAT, and, and, and so basically it is social insurance where you contribute, yeah? you contribute and you share the risks, yeah? and, and you pool the resources together, that is social insurance. And uh, you also have the labor market aspect of social protection. So what we were doing at the center when um, from 2013 onwards was to look at the whole gamut of social protection, hence, uh, um, and, and also health. So we therefore, the more fitting uh, uh, name for the center we felt was social well-being although the theory and the system that we use or framework that we use to guide our work is the social protection framework. And we also changed the financial protection uh, chair to social well-being chair, yeah? Because we found that the um, financial protection chair was too limiting. 
And in 2021, since our center had gone through the transformation, yeah, we started uh, as a center uh, among the universities, yeah, not just the Faculty of Economics, uh, but also the different faculties in the University of Malaya. And then we also link with other universities, with, uh, with USM, the University of Science Malaysia, for instance, two of, of our research projects were headed by uh, Professor Saeed Atul from an economist from USM. And we also have a work with UPM, uh, the Institute of Aging or My Aging. Yeah? So uh, to reflect the work that we do, which is not just confined to just economics, we then uh, um, uh, were transferred in terms of governance under the Deputy Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation. Yeah. So uh, we since then had uh, gone from um, being a national centre to a regional centre, Yeah, because we work with not just the EPF, but we receive funding from uh, uh, the Social Security Organization Malaysia, SOCSO, and we also receive funding uh, uh, later from the Asian Development Bank and also from the ILO and also from uh, UNDP. And uh, currently we are heavily, our Malaysia Aging Retirement Survey is heavily supported by the University of Michigan uh, um, in the US and also uh, RAND Corporation uh, uh, and the National Institute of Aging uh, uh, United States, yeah. So we have gone beyond our shores uh, to support uh, our work on social uh, security and social protection. So our uh, um, uh, um, pillars, yeah, or our activities are uh, along these five main uh, categories, yeah. Uh, first of all, we were established as a research center, but not just to do any kind of research in our case, our research has to reflect the national, uh, um, the national concerns, the national priorities, because the idea of our research is to fit into policies. Yeah? So uh, we work with the EPF and we also work with the government. So um, we started working with the Committee on Social Security, which was uh, um, the Secretariat was the Ministry of Finance. Um, but later it became bigger and, and later established as the Malaysian Social Protection Council, which is chaired by the Prime Minister. Yeah. So SWRC plays a big role there because uh, we supported the establishment of the MySPC through the cabinet paper. And then we also uh, uh, support uh, uh, the current my SPC under the current government. Yeah. So my SPC was established in 2016. Yeah. And then uh, that was under the BN and then the PH took over and now under PN. So we are still supporting uh, currently the secretariat of the uh, Malaysian Social Protection Council is the implementation coordination unit and we support the implementation coordination unit. Yeah. So that's what research is for us, yeah? Of course, uh, in order for us to validate our research, we also go for peer-reviewed uh, um, um, journals, yeah? Peer-reviewed uh, 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 platform. So that's where we get from our, uh, our journal publications, where we get uh, comments and we get good review or uh, um, uh, critics uh, for us to look at our methodology, to look at uh, um, our assumptions, yeah. So uh, in order to get the global or uh, universal type of uh, validation uh, is through our peer-reviewed work, yeah. So among the flagship projects that we have at the center is the Malaysia Aging and Retirement Survey. This is a nationwide survey. It is the uh, the first uh, uh, longitudinal survey covering a wide aspect of uh, um, issues. Yeah. So of course, uh, LPPKN had one uh, survey, and they had for for two cycles. Yeah. Um, but they did not cover the social economic that we cover. We cover five main areas: the social economic and employment. We also cover health uh, um, and health utilization. 
Um, we also cover assets um, and health in, 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 a, in a big way. Uh, we do check your physical, uh, which is not the self-reporting, but the actual measurement of what we consider important uh, among the 40-year-old and older. And this is to support the aging population that Malaysia is currently experiencing. Yeah. So uh, the Malaysia Aging and Retirement Survey, as I mentioned, is a is, is a randomized uh, sampling uh, survey. The random uh, the sampling frame is the from DOSM from Department of Statistics Malaysia, and we it covers Sabah and Sarawak. It covers urban, rural, male, female, and the different ethnic groups to be representative of the population of Malaysia. And uh, we have completed. The, um, the cycle one or Mars with one, we call it, in 2019. And we are currently working on with two of Mars. Yeah. So for Mars uh, uh, um, findings, not only uh, we share the uh, findings and our insights into the aging uh, population in Malaysia, but we also share it globally. And therefore, comparative, uh, scientific comparative work can be done. Yeah? So we are on the uh, platform to global aging. Yeah? So uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you were to, to, to go to the website, Gateway to Global Aging, uh, you can see that Mars is also harmonized and part of that global research, which has about 28 other uh, research uh, uh, databases. Yeah? Our second flagship project is the reference budget for Malaysian households, which is Blanjawan Ku. Blanjawan Ku, uh, or the first uh, um, uh, project, or the first Blanjawan Ku that we had was 2018. Uh, uh, it was launched by the then uh, Minister of Finance, uh, uh, YB, uh, Lim Guan Eng, yeah, was to serve as a guide to the residents of um, Klang Valley, and especially those who are 20, uh, 18 to 40 years old. Yeah? So we took that age because um, uh, the, the, a few reasons. Yeah? One of the reasons is the serious indebtedness among Malaysian youth. Yeah? So I think in, in a public domain, and probably uh, everyone is aware that indebtedness among our youth is very high, yeah? and bankruptcy uh, um, cases are also very high. Uh, therefore, uh, the EPF, uh, working together with us, wants something like what uh, Europe has. Uh, they call it the reference budget. Yeah? Uh, and uh, we we adopt the um, Netherlands the model uh, uh, that is being used by Netherlands and later adopted for other European countries for Malaysia. Although we localize uh, uh, the the model, yeah. So uh, as you can see, you can compare our Blanjawan Ku, uh, uh, the Malaysian Blanjawan Ku, and the one in Netherlands. There are one or two elements that the Netherlands. Um, have or don't have, no, no, what the Netherlands have, don't have that we have, yeah? What Netherlands have, we have, but what they don't have, we have. For instance, savings, yeah? In the Netherlands, they don't include savings, uh, perhaps because their people are uh, safe well enough and also because they do have social pension. When they retire, they get, uh, they get pension yeah? uh, uh, from the government, yeah? On capacity building, on the second category is capacity building. Uh, um, capacity building, uh, we, uh, we offer a course at the MAC level, a social protection course, because we feel that um, economists, uh, um, it would benefit yeah, Malaysia and society in general yeah, if social protection is seen as an economic tool. Yeah? Because we view, we at the center really view social protection as a, a, a tool for development. Yeah? So that's how we approach social protection costs in the MAC level. And we also, MAC is Master of Economics. Yeah? And the professional courses and certification is to raise the level of uh, uh, social security and social protection professionals to become uh, accredited and to be recognized as, the, as a profession, just like finance, accounting, Islamic finance. 
uh, and the likes. Yeah? And for our policy input, as I mentioned, is uh, our role in the in Malaysia Social Protection Council and our publications, you can check our website. And we advocate uh, uh, on social well-being, social uh, protection through conferences, uh, workshops, media, writing, and also educational and community outreach. What we did was, when we had the Blanjawan coup, we used the Blanjawan coup. It's also on our website. You can go and see our uh, the 2021 figures, yeah? the how much do you need uh, to live a decent life in Kuala Lumpur, in Kota Baru, yeah? in Johor Baru, uh, in Kuala Tunggano. So go to our website. Yeah? And our collaboration and partnership, we collaborate both nationally and internationally to create that synergy of knowledge, yeah? to learn from each other and to benefit from each other's uh, cases and insights. Yeah, next. And this is our journey, yeah. Um, I did mention uh, uh, in my previous uh, uh, segment that how when we began, yeah, um, we began in 20, 2008, uh, uh, we started bran branching out by having international conferences, signing MOUs, introducing the course on social protection, yeah. And, and also later, we, we uh, work with uh, a Canadian organization called NIPBA to give a professional certification to the Certified Di uh, Disability Management Program and also for uh, Certified Return to Work Program, yeah? So this is with an organization uh, in uh, NIDMA. And we are the only country uh, 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 sorry, accredited and, um, uh, in Southeast Asia, yeah? The other one is in Hong Kong. And um, now we have participants from Indonesia as well. And I think uh, you could see there that uh, we've also signed an MOU with the University of Michigan, yeah? in 2018. And going forward, as I mentioned, that we have um, gone beyond our shores, yeah, expanded beyond our shores uh, to share with the international scientific community on the Malaysia Aging Retirement Survey uh, uh, results. And now we're going to wave two. We've extended the Blanjawan coup to other cities and we are working on getting certification for our professional courses. Um, and signing MOUs with other agencies. So that's how uh, we see ourselves, not just playing a role uh, in the country, uh, in the region, and also uh, uh, elsewhere. Yeah? So our network and collaboration, as you can see, um, next slide, uh, uh, yeah, that we are uh, networking and uh, collaborating with various, uh, both universities and international agencies yeah, uh, uh, globally, yeah. So um, you can see that uh, we are not just with Europe, Oxford, Nibu and, and all that, but also in Korea and Japan, yeah, in South Korea with the KDI school, um, with the OECD uh, based in uh, Seoul um, and also um, uh, in, the, uh, in Japan, yeah. Um, with the University of Tokyo, with the Asian Development Bank Institute, yeah, and also the Asian Development Bank in um, uh, in Manila, um, and within the country, as you can see, with so many uh, different uh, multi uh, multilateral agencies, yeah, such as the UNICEF, AKBK, the World Bank and the likes, yeah? And our partners are um, KWSP and Pekesa, yeah? So um, that, that is our uh, global uh, network, yeah? Next. The, um, the benefits uh, that we have uh, created, yeah, both we, it's, it has benefited the center, but also the center uh, sharing uh, expertise and knowledge yeah, with our shareholders, with our visiting experts and researchers, through our networking and partnerships, our sharing and learning, and uh, our continued uh, uh, extension and collaboration. Yeah, so um, we hope to do more and to dig deeper. Um, one of the things that that I think that's facing this country is the issue with aging. Yeah. Um, and we want to also see that um, 
um, as other countries are facing um, the SAP or the um, a continuation of the aging problems such as, as Alzheimer's, dementia, and all that, we are looking into that as well. So, so to prepare the Malaysian government and, and we as a society, not just the government, uh, as a scientific community and also as a society, how do we prepare ourselves, you know, uh, when we ourselves will be old and our, um, our parents uh, uh, will reach that, that uh, uh, situation where we have Alzheimer's and, and many others, how do we cope? with this? How do we cope in terms of facilities? How do we cope in terms of the, the resource side? Yeah, our professionals, yeah, to prepare for this? Or do we have enough professionals and knowledge in this regard uh, for us to be a, um, an inclusive society? So at the end of the day, yeah, it is about um, not just about development, but it is about inclusive uh, development. We have our challenges next. Our challenges is um, uh, as a center, yeah, as a center uh, within the university, uh, we do uh, appreciate uh, the, the issue with uh, social science versus science-based research centers. Yeah? How do we qualify as a center for research excellence? Yeah. <clears throat> because um, research excellence come, uh, will have varied definitions. And we're hoping that more of centers like us, you know, that we can share uh, um, what, what is our definition of a center for excellence for, for a social science uh, based uh, research centers. And our strategic partners uh, uh, versus the university, what the university would go for, yeah. Um, peer review, uh, uh, peer review journals, and all that. And for us, it is equally important because that would validate, that would legitimize whatever ideas we are talking at the center. But how do we strike a balance between fulfilling, yeah, what's uh, 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 the the expectations of a top research university in the country vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what we want or how. Uh, uh, our other mandates, not what we want, is our other mandates, which is to uh, educate the community <clears throat> and to provide policy input. Yeah? And uh, our challenges also is that because we are a research center, we have the, uh, the nature of service is different. Uh, ours is contractual, you know. How do we work uh, at that level? Although I'm getting into the administration of this, um, but bear with me because this is important because it has got the bearing on the, um, on the output of the research and career path of researchers. How do we keep researchers, keep good researchers yeah, for, that, for them or for us yeah, as a center to have what we call the institutional uh, uh, knowledge yeah, uh, in the center, the institutional experience. How do we retain and, 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 and later to uh, multiply yeah, this knowledge uh, within the center. So my 20 minutes, I think uh, uh, I've done about 20 minutes. I would rather have more time for discussions, huh? uh, uh, Dr. Adams, yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Roma. I think that it's been a very interesting uh, insights that you have uh, provided, especially on the um, research center. Um, I will have also issued an invitation to our participants. If you do have any questions for uh, Prof. Dr. Norma, please feel free to ask the question. Now is your opportunity uh, to ask. You can uh, just put it into the text uh, box and uh, we will post it online to uh, Prof. Norma. Yeah? So I will complicate it across. Um, if you're not sure whether it's too complicated, you're not sure how to word it, it's okay, just put it there and I will try my best to communicate it for you uh, to Prof. Dr. Norma. Uh, Prof. Dr. Norma, I'd just like to um, get your insights about a uh, few things. Uh, Throughout your presentations, you were mentioning about um, the research center, the establishment, and we are talking about international collaborations, and you have given us some insights about the various collaboration that has been established by the research center and the focus of the research center and uh, in terms of uh, impact and in terms of research publication, peer review. So uh, one thing that caught my attention uh, from Dr. Noma was that there seems to be a switch of 
uh, named. Uh, uh, we 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 went from social welfare uh, to social support and old age financial protection. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit? Why was that transition there? Uh, uh, is it something got to do with awareness or is there something got to do with the research trend that is, we are heading towards? Could you help to explain that, Prof? Sure, sure. That, that's a very uh, good question, Do Donnie, because I think many Malaysians um, uh, uh, do not uh, appreciate yeah, the differences or the change that has happened through the decades. Yeah? Uh, and I think we are all academics. We know that um, the scientific field uh, change uh, uh, with the change in our society, the development of the society, vice versa. Yeah? So they give the input to, to our scientific thinking and, and we give input back into the society uh, uh, and try to frame and understand the changes in the society. So when we were, we, we, we were a colony of the British Empire, yeah? So many of the systems were inherited from the British uh, system. So the social welfare system was inherited from the British. In fact, when the EPF and SOCSO was established, it was established uh, by the British, yeah? Or the ideas where at least the EPF yeah, was established for, for workers uh, uh, during the British uh, uh, um, uh, colonization, yeah, <clears throat> and and um, and the idea was the EPF. The idea for the EPF was for the expatriates, the British expatriates, for them to save while they are here, and for and then when they retire, they go back to the mother country, Britain. They will bring back all the money, yeah. So, but Britain has evolved. Yeah, the European countries has evolved since since then. So they evolved from the social welfare to social security, to social protection. Social protection will cover from birth to your grave, from birth till death. Even while you are uh, um, developing the, the, the child yeah, uh, um, in, in the womb, yeah? um, it's called maternity care. That, that is when social protection starts already. Yeah. So how do you ensure that the fetus you are carrying is healthy, um, the mother is eating well because that will reflect on the fetus, and a healthy fetus will have a better brain, a better cognitive development after they are born. The first 1,000 days of after the child uh, uh, is born is the most important. That's when the brain started to develop. So at the center, we try to talk about these things, how maternity care is important, how child, having a child, uh, um, so in some countries, they give child grant so that the child has enough vitamins, has enough nutrition for the minds to be developed, for the, the, the cognitive uh, development, yeah? and then they, they start going to school. So that is why in many countries, if, if you learn the history of social protection, yeah, or health history, for instance, initially they were focusing on you as an adult. Yeah? But now as a developed society, they are also focusing on while you are healthy or while you are young, how do you prevent for you to become an, a healthy adult and from a healthy adult to, to a healthy older person? So uh, healthcare is now shifting and social protection is also shifting to not just caring about because you are poor, yeah, which is only one, one, one way to look at social protection. It's true, it does uh, uh, assist or address poverty, but it's more than that, yeah? Social welfare is, is charity, Donny, yeah? That you, it's like you bagi, bagi sedekah, Bagi, um, yeah, that is a social welfare. But social protection is not. Social protection is development because you want to develop this child to become a clever Malaysian because you want Malaysia to be able to compete at the global level. Yeah, if you don't have clever adults that is that is developed since young, yeah, how are you going to compete with all the you know others who are they're focusing on the right stuff, yeah? So uh, uh, that's what social protection is as opposed to social welfare. So it goes beyond, it goes beyond just giving to the poor. So we are now giving to those who are 
uh, uh, who are in need. Yeah. So we call uh, uh, is to to cover your vulnerable uh, uh, stages in life. Yeah. So when you are a child, you know, you are vulnerable. You are not working. Your parents are poor. You don't get good, uh, good nutrition. When you are an adult, if you are disabled, you are sick. If you don't get enough training for you to, in order for you to have a job, not enough education, yeah, um, you're not going to get a job. So we are also supporting human capital here, yeah. And then when you are old, you are old. Now is about fifty percent. It depends on which data you look at, uh, Donny. Some data will say that fifty-five percent of Malaysians are covered. Only forty-five are not covered. Some data will say it's the opposite. Forty-five are covered. When they are old, they get they do have some savings because we still have a big percentage of Malaysian adults who are in uh, the informal sector or the self-employed. They are not covered because our social protection is still voluntary. Yeah, we have the EPF. EPF you can withdraw at the age of fifty-five or sixty, and now you can withdraw like almost any time because this is the third withdrawal that we have allowed. Yeah. So, uh, uh, where does that leave you? So, and uh, and and when you are old. So, when you are old, if you are not covered, if you don't have any savings, um, in the past maybe you can rely on the labour market because our social protection in the past is very employment oriented. We create jobs, we support jobs, we support companies not to fire our people, not to 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 uh, um, yeah. To retrench because our people don't have the protection. Yeah. So, uh, but that's not the model. When you become a developed country, all developed countries will have unemployment benefits. They they save enough. If you are unemployed, you lose your jobs. You have some income at least to cover you for six months. All developed countries have that, and we are nearing there. So if we don't prepare ourselves from now, and we want to wait, sometimes you know I hear comments that oh we are not developed yet. So when we de develop, then we have all those. But that's not the way. Other countries have some of these systems in place, even when they were poorer than us. Yeah. So um, when you uh, are already you don't have enough saving, how are you going to during your good times if you're surplus? You don't save and invest. How are you going to reap it, or where are you going to get it from when you need it? When you are uh, uh, developed and, and, and old, yeah. Because the country now we have about uh, uh, um, seven percent of the Malaysians are the age of sixty and older. But in the next few years, twenty thirty, you know, we have about fourteen fifteen percent. So where are we going to get the funds to support this this age group? If they have individually, that should be the way, yeah. But if they don't, and if they don't have enough even now to feed themselves, how are they going? You know, how are they? How do you expect them to save when they 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 retire? So those are very big, uh, um, you know, topics that we as a society uh, uh, have to uh, to to discuss. Yeah, yeah. thanks, uh, Donny. Thank you, Prof. Dato. I think that is a very good insight for us on um, how do we transition uh, our understanding about social welfare and the transition to social protection. And I think that among the points that you continuously emphasize is about the awareness, uh, Prof. Dato, the awareness to the public, the awareness about <coughs> what is social protection and the awareness that social protection starts from birth and right to death. And, you know, we're talking about the first crucial period of a baby, the child, uh, within the 1,000 days. Um, so from, from what I gather, uh, Prof. Dato, you seem to be emphasizing quite a bit about um, awareness and uh, perception and, you know, the change of mentality that people need to have. Um, you know, so is uh, social welfare is not uh, in the past. We are now transitioning to a social protection kind of a paradigm. Um, so, Prof. Dato, could you share with us um, in terms of creating public awareness? You know, so you you were saying that uh, people need to know, you know, and we cannot stay in the developing country mindset. Uh, we need to develop along the way. Uh, we need to work on it now rather than wait for our status to be a developed country. So, could you share with us about um, how do we create such an awareness uh, through your research that you are doing now? Um, how can we um, 
spread the awareness to the public and how can we create more potential uh, uh, what is uh, can I say interventions uh, more uh, potential contributions uh, to the community product um, yeah various ways um, we are also working with our partners yeah so our research findings and insights into what's happening uh, in our society uh, and, and, and moving forward, um, what should be the, uh, or what, what will be the, the sustainable way we share with our partners as well. So we are not doing this alone. Yeah? We are also part of the financial uh, education network. Uh, um, where the central bank is uh, the secretariat. Yeah? We work with um, um, KRI, we work with um, EPF um, and, and many others so with, with MOF and all that as well. Uh, the EPU, yeah. So uh, whenever we can, whenever we can, I mean, it is not just whenever we can, we schedule, we schedule our work so that um, we reach out to various segments of the society. So NGOs sometimes invite us to speak. We go and talk about these issues, yeah. Uh, our idea, uh, uh, Donny, you, 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 you were spot on when you say that yeah, our mindset cannot be the developing society mindset. Donny, um, being a high-income country is, is about numbers, yeah? It's about from um, 10,000 US dollars per month, uh, GNI, to uh, 12,000 um, uh, US dollars per month, GNI. This GNI is you take the total wealth of the country, you divide by the, the number of population. Are we equal? Do people really get uh, 12,000 US dollars per month? Does every Malaysian get that? They don't. Yeah. So they are this, this uh, qualification that we are talking about, um, it, it, it's a club. It, the club is by the numbers. Now, what, how does not that numbers translate into us if we, you know, if you recall the vision 2020, we may not achieve that in term, achieve that in total. But there are some good uh, lessons there. Uh, vision 2020, we go back to our Ruko Negara. There are a lot of lessons there as well. So we as a society, we have to be educated that how to be a mature, a mature developed citizen. A mature developed citizen is someone who takes upon themselves the responsibility to live, to self-actualize is an individual call. The government, on the other hand, has the responsibility to provide the ecosystem. But you, as an individual, need to have that first. So I think one can, because we have many guests, uh, uh, you know, in our country's guests, yeah, either as workers, as students, talk to them and see their aspiration. I think you can see the difference. Yeah, uh, That's why we are moving fast, because the aspiration to do better, to, to work harder, to do to 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 um, to learn more, we have more of those compared to some of these countries that that are not where we are yet. Yeah, but are we at the level that, for instance, the country? I don't know. You want to compare South Korea, perhaps? Perhaps you don't want to compare with the Western societies, but with South Korea, with Japan, do we have that? Do we take the responsibility that paying income tax or paying taxes? Income mm. tax is only one component. And Donny, for your information, because I was at the NEAC as well, I, I know I have the information that, that how many 10% of us, or sorry, 30% of us are paying the income tax. Because if we don't have other kind of general taxes, yeah, we don't have general taxes, we only have targeted taxes, how are we going to subsidize the general things that people are consuming? We are subsidizing petrol for everyone. We are subsidizing minyak masa for everyone. And yet, our revenue base is very narrow. People don't want to pay tax in this country. 
Many people don't want to pay taxes. Of course, there are people who want to pay taxes. But as a developed, as a mature society, you want to pay. I know that people say, oh, it's because of corruption and all that. Corruption is another issue. We have to address corruption. We might suffer. Many economists, when they want to address corruption, the, the economic growth drop for a, for a bit. That's okay. Because in the long run, that's more sustainable. Yeah. So corruption has to be addressed. People have to feel responsible that if they are found or perceived to be corrupt, is to be accountable, you know, and show uh, uh, that they are, you know, that for their actions, yeah. So this is what our society needs to come to terms with, that we have to be responsible, yeah, as a citizen, and we have to plan, yeah. But at the same time, we should also contribute to what we enjoy, what we want to enjoy in the future. So the awareness at the center is not just working with the public, but also for the role of government. Yeah, policymakers, uh, uh, the government, uh, uh, come and come and go. But the technocrats, the planners who are there. Yeah, in the past, the Malaysian society or we, uh, uh, the Malaysian bureaucracy, yeah, the public bureaucracy, it, it, it is known for its. Uh, um, um, for, for its wisdom, for its wealth of knowledge, etc. So don't lose that because we need that. Because in every country, you know, politics is, is very temporary. Yeah. Not many countries will have uh, one, one ideology. Yeah. Because we want to associate ideology with, with a political party or with, uh, you know, with one government. Not many countries will have the same ideology. Uh, uh, year in, year out, decade in, decade out, yeah? But at least the basic things, I think, have to be understood by planners that the government has a role to play, not to take care or not to get into business, but to provide an environment good for business, but at the same time to have a social policy. So social policy, policy is an intervention, yeah? Intervention to correct the market failure. Yeah, if you leave it to market, we all know that it doesn't necessarily work. But the social policies should kick in to support whatever failures uh, or things that fall through the cracks that is not addressed by the market. Yeah, so through various uh, uh, um, platforms, like talking to you today, uh, talking to um, some of the media, yeah, and through my writings, you know, I, I write as well, and all. All of us at the center, we write to popular media and also to, um, to various other media for us to all understand and, and raise our level of awareness and knowledge up to the level that is uh, that commensurate our level of development. Yeah, And again, I would repeat that we have to move away of thinking social protection or social safety net as charity, it is not charity. It is everyone's responsibility yeah, to care for its weak in that society. Because you have, you give more. And who don't have, you, 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 you receive the help. But it is also towards development. It is towards human capital. It is also towards investment. Because if you do not have the demand, yeah, if you not have the demand, you know, who, who are you producing it for? Yeah. So that's how the economy works. It is, it, it is a virtu virtuous circle, yeah? You, you know, what you spend goes into the production and the production goes back here. And, but if you don't save, it doesn't go back into the investment, yeah? So uh, uh, that's how uh, uh, we at the center try to work on these issues. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Prof. Dato. I mean, uh, Prof. Dato, thank you for sharing, uh, especially that insights. I think one thing that is quite interesting from your sharing just now was about uh, creating the awareness and uh, getting the public aware about uh, social protection. And I think one of the challenging things that is facing um, researchers um, lately is how do we communicate a national agenda in Malaysia, for example? So uh, as what you rightly say, uh, Prof. Noma, that uh, we are an aging population in a few years' time, even though the percentage looks lower now, but in a few, time, in a few years, it's going to go up. And 
But this seems to be a national agenda for Malaysia. But what we could see from your presentation earlier, you seem to be collaborating with a lot of international partners. Um, you, you seem to be communicating this agenda uh, to them and they, they, they seem to be want to be involved. Uh, so could you share with us, how do you do that? How do you communicate a national agenda uh, like a concern on social protection for Malaysia to the international audience and get them involved in our agenda? Yeah. Um, uh, we, we definitely, our main uh, uh, <clears throat> responsibility is to the nation. Yeah? <clears throat> we don't compromise on that. So whenever we ask to share, we share. So we have been sharing yeah, in various platforms, in, in various committees and task forces. I, I, I sit on, so, uh, and, and on several task forces. Yeah? Um, uh, so that, that's one level. What we are doing globally is to exchange information. Yeah. Uh, um, we want to learn from their mistakes. We also want to learn from their successes. We want to repeat their successes. So uh, that's the idea of getting the global uh, uh, network and global uh, exchange. How do we get to, uh, um, uh, to work with them? Um, one, you, you have to have something that you want to share. Yeah? Mm. Uh, uh, working globally is not just getting everything from them. And, and is, um, yeah, it won't work. Yeah, so you have to something to share, and they 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 too will offer something to share with you. I think it's our our track record. Uh, um, um, international organizations or um, universities abroad, if they see that um, you have your track record, i.e., you have completed several projects, and and you have to your name. Um, uh, some of the original thoughts or some thoughts yeah, that you're passionate about. And they can see that it's, a, it's a continuous. People can sense if it's temporal, yeah? if, if it's just a, a, a season. Yeah? And then after that, you work on something else, which I did too. Yeah? And I shared with you, yeah? because prior to this, I was working uh, on issues on governance, on public administration. Uh, then I moved on to pub more public policy, economic policy. I went to the prime minister's department yeah? Then I came back. But I started working on uh, social protection issues post-97 crisis. Uh, when we were, uh, no, no, prior to that, prior to that, in the 1990s, yeah. Um, and, uh, but post-1997 crisis, I was a consultant to the World Bank to look at policy response in the labor market uh, to the crisis, yeah. So, uh, uh, and while I was doing that project uh, um, in, in, uh, in Thailand, uh, they already had the unemployment uh, benefits, yeah, employment benefits, uh, UI, they call it, yeah, unemployment insurance, yeah. So in Malaysia in 1990s and 1990s, 1980s and 1990s, it was a taboo to talk about unemployment insurance. But we continue to talk about it. Yeah? So that's when uh, uh, I, I started working on, on these issues. And then I took over uh, the center in 2013 after I came back from, from the Prime Minister's Department. Now, when we were uh, um, uh, working on this, we, when I, I, I started working with the center, we started again working on the unemployment insurance and all that. And, and lo, uh, lo and behold, yeah, it was uh, announced uh, by the Malaysian government, the introduction of the employment insurance system. Yeah? So um, in 2018, yeah? so you can see uh, that some of your ideas and the, uh, then the, the work, that, that you are working on, you are not alone. Yeah? There are also other people. So um, to network and to work together um, so, that, so that there are more voices uh, is key also to creating change. Yeah? So uh, um, yeah, so we got the um, uh, unemployment insurance launched in 2018. Um, and uh, 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 so I think the, I could see the, the work on social protection uh, is gaining traction in, in public policy and also among people, yeah? Because as I mentioned that I also appear in some of the NGOs forums and all that. I talk uh, uh, to the, um, the aging, uh, gosh, older persons, uh, NASCOM, sorry, I, uh, you know, if they're out there, I do apologize. Uh, NASCOM, I think that's what they call, yeah? Uh, that, the founder, yeah? Um, and, and, um, so I, I talk to them and, and talk about some of these issues that it should go beyond 
uh, and the Ministry of Women, yeah, that uh, uh, is true. We need the community centers for the older persons to come and 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 to work as a community. But we need policies beyond that, yeah, uh, uh, as a government. So um, that that's that's our work at the national level. At the international level, uh, we advance what we are thinking, yeah, and also bring back some of the ideas that they have. You know, for instance, from our work. A global, uh, having our global uh, partners, we realize that sometimes social protection that is targeted doesn't work because there are a lot of issues involved. Yeah, so sometimes uh, um, having a universal program is much more uh, um, much more effective. Yeah, for instance, if you target the poor, you know, in Africa, we learn from UNICEF they have tried targeting the poor. Uh, uh, and they will go, I mean, they, they, they have the, the uh, mechanism to go from house to house and measure the arm of a child in order to indicate that he or she is malnourished. Yeah. So then, then they realize that one child is passed from household to household. Yeah. Because, you know, that child seems to have a small arm, which shows that she's undernourished. So suddenly, if this child is everywhere, because mm. um, you know, if so, if you go by ticking the box, then we know that you know it doesn't work. Yeah. So, um, it, so you need for a, a different policy approach. Um, this is how we learn from other countries and certain policies. You know that um, is uh, it has been tested elsewhere and proven to be uh, um, what do you call that. Um, uh, not workable, yeah, or not sustainable, and also a uh, higher uh, uh, degree of abuse. Of course, any good, uh, there's no such thing as perfect policy, perfect public policy. They will be subject to abuse. But I remember one good, uh, 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 what do you call, one good uh, advice that we should not allow perfect perfection to be the enemy of good. Yeah. So if you want to, you want to do good, you cannot allow. For, for the system to be perfect. They, it will be subjected to certain loopholes, yeah? So um, our uh, uh, work, work with the uh, University of Michigan um, and all that, and, and they supported us in a big way, yeah? Mm. They uh, even supplied us with the, um, the uh, laptops, yeah? Because uh, we use the real-time computer-aided system, which is the first time ever in Malaysia, yeah? Uh, uh, they supply us with the laptops. They also supply us with the software. So the software is very costly if we were to um, to buy, and if we were to do it uh, with our uh, um, experts here, it would be time consuming. So they are sharing the uh, uh, software with us first. Um, but I mean, later we can also uh, develop our software. So Donny, that's my response to your. Uh, um, question that um, I think uh, one has to show, start small, show that you can successfully implement it, yeah, and if people can see from track record, they trust you, and please deliver, and deliver quality work, yeah. yeah? Um, I always, um, this is my, um, my uh, guide, yeah, when I uh, do work at the center, our quality control. Uh, because of my experience working with the, um, the World Bank um, system that they have for research, they have a quality control. They will have a group of experts that before it's final, you know, you test with the best first. Yeah? You test with the best. Of course, they will have to sign an, an, uh, an NDA. Yeah? Uh, uh, but uh, um, you get the critic, critics from them. Yeah? Uh, um, and if your work is not good enough, you have to work until you achieve that level, yeah? Uh, uh, only then, you know, your, I mean, this is what scientific uh, 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 rigor is all about, yeah? So that we try our, our level best, yeah? To be as, as scientific, I mean, social science is not an exact science, um, but we try to be uh, accurate, yeah? We have assumptions, but we try to be accurate and we work with the best minds in order for, for us to be close uh, uh, to being accurate.
Donny, thanks. Thank you, Prof. Dato. Okay, I, I would just also like to um, extend an invitation to all our participants. I think we, close, we have close to 50 here in Zoom and uh, definitely more for those who are streaming online. Um, now is your opportunity. If you have any questions you would like to ask uh, Prof. Dato, please uh, use this opportunity now. Uh, you can post the questions in the chat and uh, I'm sure Prof. Dato will be more than happy to help to answer that question. Uh, Prof. Dato, coming back to... A question. Um, sorry? I have a question. Do I just ask? Go ahead, or... Renuka. Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for your presentation, Prof. Dato. Uh, um, Renuka, may I ask, where are you from? I'm yeah. from UM. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm at the law faculty oh, and hi, hi. Yes. I teach employment law at postgraduate and undergraduate level. Mm -hmm. In fact, my PhD research is also on uh, this topic. So it's very exciting for me to uh, hear your presentation. Um, and so speaking of impactful research, <clears throat> one of the issues that I have been looking at is the increasing number of employers who try to avoid EPF by giving uh, independent contracts to their employees so that they are considered contractors rather than uh, employees and then they can avoid the payment of EPF. And so this issue of sham contracts, which for instance in Australia, there is a legislation prohibiting sham contracts where for all intents and purposes, they are actually employees, but the employer tries to evade employer obligations by um, creating sham contracts. And so there's legislation prohibiting that. And there's a lot of promotion being done by the government to encourage employers not to engage in these sham contracts, particularly where the salaries are small. You know, for the low-income workers, I think, I don't know whether Prof has seen, even in the most recent last year's budget, uh, but I saw it in the statistics department's website, where how do they calculate who is employed? And the criteria is so long as you work one day in the week, yes. past week, you are considered employed, mm -hmm. which is a very, very low criterion, I would think, because you don't get EPF or SOXO or any kind of social protection from working one day a week, maybe selling nasi mm -hmm. So I wonder whether I, and this is the area that I'm interested in. So, but when I think about, you know, creating impactful research collaborations on this subject, I'm at a loss as to how to go about it. I have an industry partner that is doing certain uh, initiatives to try and increase employment among youth, but they are so failing. They have tried to engage the government, MDEC, all kinds of things. It's a very, I feel like the reason we are walking around with blindfolds is it's difficult to see who to approach. You know, there's so much opacity, um, and uh, yeah, I, I think researchers like me and, you know, I was a practitioner for 20 years before I came into academia um, and it's all new to me. And I think because of the changing nature of research and all the new developments that are coming up, it's so difficult for people to, you know, sort of scour through all the, the, the different, the maze that is, uh, you know, research. So I'm so glad to hear your presentation. I don't know whether, and, and from your presentation, I saw that you had really big stakeholder partners. You had EPF, you know, you had the Prime Minister's Department, you had Michigan University. You know, these are like, for newcomers, I guess it's very, wow, this sounds like huge. And maybe I should start with something small first. So any thoughts or ideas? Menuka, Menuka, thank you very much. Uh, um, and thank you for attending this because I, um, uh, oh gosh, I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> uh, we uh, we did an inventory when I, 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 I um, started at the center, we did an inventory on people working on the, lab, uh, uh, as I mentioned, the three elements, yeah, three categories of uh, social protection. And we did an inventory, but it's been a long, a while now. 
that we have not done another inventory. We will definitely include you, Renika, in our uh, um, list of researchers. Do you know that I have to, um, uh, how do you call this, Paksarela, I think Malaysians understand. Uh, Paksarela, my colleagues, to do work on social protection. I'm of sure, course, we, I know of course, we give us funds. Uh, we give funds. We give out funds. Because that's the idea of APF establishing a center at the university is to encourage research. And how do you do, res you do research without funding? Now, we don't use the principle. Yeah? We, we, EPF gave us an endowment fund. I think you, you, you all uh, are quite familiar with how an endowment fund works, that we don't use the principle, we invest the principle, but we only use the dividend, uh, um, you know, the, the, the return on our investments to fund our activities. Yeah? So we cannot afford to give big funds. But if it's big funds, we try to search collaborators for you. But we certainly look for researchers. I always say that at the center, we have lots of ideas. We have lots of things that we want to look at, but we don't have the people that, that, um, that would want to do research for us. Now we know that Dr. Renika is one of those that we will, uh, uh, we will uh, engage or will please uh, um, contact us, yeah? contact me, uh, send me an email. Uh, send me a proposal, you know, uh, I can be direct uh, uh, since there are only 50 of you here. So um, send me a proposal simply because informal sector uh, is the black box that we are trying to understand. Yeah. So this is what they call self-employed, what they call the precariat. Yeah. The sal yes. salariat versus the precariat. The precariat. ILO has one report on that. So Renuka, you can you can visit that. So it would include it, what you mentioned, include people who are we consider as employed one day in a week. That's what we use for our to consider being employed in, in, in Malaysia by Dawson. So and that that was why when you talk about data, why is my data always different from the government data? when you talk about people who are not covered by social protection. Yeah, it's simply that, Renuka, because uh, we look at Malaysians at the age of 15 to 64 or 15 to, to 59. There are about 22.2 million. Yeah, so out of that, how many are in school? Yeah. Uh, um, are in universities, about 1 million. How many are civil servants? How many, whatever. So we minus, minus, we found out that about 55% of Malaysian adults are not covered by, so this is the people like what you said. Lah. Yeah. So, um, okay, there are various groups that we can uh, 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 talk to. Um, for instance, there is uh, uh, under Topa is the poverty circle. Yeah, um, I'm in that circle and a few other NGOs and my former colleague, uh, Dr. Sulochana Nair, who's formerly with UAC now, she's, uh, she's also in the group and also a uh, few others. Uh, yeah. So um, I will try to also, once you have your research, you know, let, let's, let's get um, the evidence as well, Renuka. Yeah? Uh, one thing about talking to uh, the government is, uh, number one, you have to repeat yourself. You know, I too sometimes feel, oh my God, you know, uh, how many uh, times have I said this? I, I'm like talking the old, same thing, you know, old record, broken record. Uh, but you have to repeat. And the other, and the other very key uh, uh, point is also data, proof, evidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that they want, Renika, is also compared to other countries. So for instance, when I talk about social, social pension, when I talk about old age pension, I said Thailand has old age pension that whoever, any Thai, doesn't matter how rich you are, for as long as you're not a civil servant, if you reach the age of 60, you will get 500 baht a month. Yeah? 500 baht a month is how much? 60 ringgit a month. Mm -hmm. Our Bantuan Keluarga Malaysia is a lot more than that, but it's mm -hmm. different because we give in tranches. They give monthly. So when it's monthly, it is recorded as, and also to them, they consider it's universal because you don't have to prove yourself that you are poor, you are whatever that you receive. So Thailand got a higher score compared to Malaysia when it comes to social protection. And then you get Vietnam. Vietnam was struggling behind us for the last 30, 40 years. But Vietnam, since 2004, has also introduced social pension. 
uh, uh, although in their case, they only give to 80 year old and older. And you know how much they give per month? 11.2 US dollars a month. And how much is that? It's about 50 ringgit a month. But because it is universal that everyone gets it at the age of 80, then uh, uh, they started as means tested as well. Yeah. So uh, um, you, you have to compare. So where do we want to be? You know, I mean, we don't compare with developed countries because all developed countries have it. But even if we compare with countries in the region who are a lot poorer than us, you know, they are doing a lot better when it comes to social protection. Yeah. So uh, 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 I'm addressing Renuka now because Renuka was the one who posed me this question. Yeah. So uh, Renuka, let's work together. Yeah. Uh, um, um, and, and, and we have to, like I said, two key uh, um, uh, or three like, yeah, just now that elements that's important um, to repeat yourself, uh, to have the data and to have comparable data with other countries. Uh, and um, this is how we talk. We, we talk to policymakers. So there are various channels that, that you know, that we can work with. Yeah. So can I'm, I just I'm, ask a follow up question? Sure. Do does the center have that comparative data concerning uh, coverage of uh, social protection in Malaysia versus maybe a few countries in the region? Of course, of course, that's what we you do. already have that. Yes, and yes. how that's what, we've been, that's what we've been using. Uh, uh, you know, we've been using to talk to the policy uh, makers. I also want that. <laughs> I have not seen that, so I need uh. to find it. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Yeah, please be in touch. And we also do fund research, as we say, we provide funds as well. Awesome. So, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Renu Khan, for that uh, question. Uh, Prof. Dato, I mean, uh, as part of our discussion with Renuka earlier, you did mention that there are a few research areas that the research center would like to conduct. and But I think one of the challenges is to find people, uh, to find researchers that is interested and uh, specifically in this area. Could you share with our audience um, today, what are the sort of research areas that uh, the Research Center intends to conduct and um, how could uh, anyone who is interested in those fields uh, participate in those research? Could you share with us, uh, Prof. Dato? Okay. Um, uh, I think uh, um, to know further or deeper, you can visit our website, yeah? But the three, the three main areas that I mentioned, three main, um, categories yeah will be ranging from social welfare um, to um, uh, social insurance yeah to labor market yeah so uh, but what dr renika uh, raised earlier is not researched upon we are not going into the research that is already done yeah uh, we can if that research is a pilot test or and then you want to scale it up um, we are not uh, keen on small research like uh, uh, looking at, you know, a, a group of students in, 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 in University of Malaya. You can as a pilot, then you want to scale it up, for instance. Um, yeah, but it's a, uh, um, oh yeah, okay, well, uh, she, will, she will get soon, yeah. So, um, and, uh, and, and good, I mean, uh, uh, Renuka, you can uh, use your research as part of your PhD work. We, we do, um, uh, what do you call that, a support PhD work as well. At our centre, we have a few PhDs already that graduated using our funds, yeah? So, uh, uh, yeah, by all means, please, uh, uh, you know, work with us. And um, so, um, those are our, our areas, yeah? The, on yes. old age, on, um, on labour market, on um, uh, informal sector, yeah? Uh, a few of those that I think if you go to the website, um, you, you, you send it to us. What we will do if it is something, but we don't pay for, uh, we don't support um, big equipments and apparatus. Yeah, that we don't. We have, a, we used to have, we, we used to get one proposal from the medical faculty, but it would involve uh, labs and all that. Uh, we, we're not getting into that because our funds, <coughs> the, the funds that we receive from the investment is not enough to sponsor that kind of research. Um, but other kinds of research. So if you send to us, uh, number one, don't worry about uh, copyright. You know, we, <coughs> we will not share it with anyone. And if we uh, feel that your research is small, we will ask, can you scale it up? If your research is something that we have done or... 
we are not keen on at the moment. We let you know, then you can go to other funders. Yeah. So um, uh, if usually when we ask for more information, when we engage you, is because we want to work with you. Yeah. So um, yeah, that that that's how we work at the center. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Tato. So I think for everyone's information, um, if you would like to work uh, closely with the research center, you would like to know what are the sort of uh, research focus and research areas, do check out the uh, research center website um, so that you are able to align your proposal accordingly. But uh, just take note as what uh, Prof. Dato says, um, uh, it has to go beyond gen than just uh, small scale projects um, within University of Malaya. But of course, uh, those discussions, you have the idea, uh, you just have to bounce off through the research center and they will be able to advise you on how to upskill it in a large scale. Mm -hmm. uh, so Prof, uh, Dato, we also have another question uh, from one of our participants, uh, Ms. Usha Rani. Uh, so Ms. Usha, can I invite you? Uh, will you be able to uh, talk about your question to Prof Dato, please? Yeah. Hi, Dr. Danny. Hi, hi. Um, you remember me? We were actually together with the supposed to be the medical thing. I, my name, I'm a doctor now. <laughs> I've, I've been a doctor for some time. Anyways, um, uh, I'm from the yeah. law faculty too. I think I, I, I posted my comments uh, in the chat. I'm just okay. highlighting the fact that there is a proposal to reform the Employment Act. And uh, there are developments in other jurisdictions uh, where employee, definition of employee has been expanded, you know, um, either by case law definition or by way of uh, statutory reforms. So I think the, because of the labor market now, uh, definitions of employee has gone undergone changes and the law is catching up to reform definitions of employee. And there's, there are some measures that are being taken currently by our government. The question is whether it's sufficient uh, so this is actually uh, basically the, the, the scope of what is defined as an employee. I think I posted it already there. Mm -hmm. And one additional question, because uh, I do have a, a, under, a PhD student uh, who is doing um, migrant employment, you know, um, migrant employment for uh, migrants who come in here, you know, maybe under the Uni UNICEF, uh, UNICEF, you know, they have a ticket um, and, you know, sometimes we do have labor shortages like we have at the moment relating to like maids and uh, some, some, some kind of sectors of employment where we need, uh, or maybe even skill employment because if they're going off to the host countries, you know, they're going to the receiving countries, maybe we can equip them. So in this context, uh, will the center actually do any study on this area? I was wondering because it's related to my student's PhD. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Usha. Um, <clears throat> not, not yet. Um, we have not gone into uh, looking at foreign uh, or uh, guest workers in the country and also among the skilled workers because um, we 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 can look into that. I mean, we can work with someone looking at that um, because, as I said, uh, the resources at the center is not. Um, we don't have that many researchers. Yeah. So we work with uh, UN researchers and also from other universities, we invite them. Um, but uh, uh, we, we definitely, we have to branch out. But currently, I think we're so focused in getting the fundamentals, Usha. We're trying to get the fundamentals right and we still, we are not able to, to, to get the fundamentals right in the country yet. Slowly, slowly, uh, as uh, Dr. Johan Marikan from the budget, promised me in, in one of our budget discussions. She said, slowly, we're picking up some of the ideas on social protection. Um, yeah, but, uh, uh, but uh, you are right. We cannot be just focusing on one issue. There are several other issues. So um, if you're a student and you are working on it, you're welcome to talk to us. Yeah, but uh, you are right. Uh, um, yeah, I forgot to mention to uh, Renuka earlier that the Employment Act is still under, um, uh, they are still doing the reform because I also sit on the Employment Insurance uh, uh, System, EIS so, so board, yeah, um, that um, the Ministry of Human Resource is working on, on reform with regards to the Employment Act, yeah. So hopefully, um, with some of those reforms, um, you know, uh, workers 
would be better protected. Um, but the um, on uh, Renuka's point, I don't know, maybe Usha knows better than this. Uh, but I think on the contract, yeah, contract workers, I think something that we have to enact that we need to crack together. I, I don't think uh, um, it's um, any um, serious effort is made towards that. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, and I'll be interested yeah, to work on something like that because I think, mm. uh, yeah, um, as uh, uh, I will repeat what Donny said, you know, we cannot be stuck in this uh, developing country mindset. Um, I know that, um, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an economist. Uh, we know that um, easy exit, easy entry into the labor market and business is the way to go. Um, uh, but because you've talked about free market, but free market is also about having good regulation and, and everyone protected too, yeah? So, because uh, I'm comparing the more developed uh, market, a developed society, for instance, in Europe, it's not easy for you to go and open, a, 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 what they call the asset in a mark store. Yeah, you can, yeah? In Malaysia, you can easily, all right? Um, so, um, it, the, so there we get into the discussion of the formal, formalization formality versus informality, yeah? So um, uh, there are a lot of issues there, but that doesn't mean that um, there's only one way, yeah? Mm. There are other ways perhaps, you know? Uh, and we are suggesting the other way, that, that the employment doesn't necessarily have to be formal uh, um, uh, because there are other things that comes with formality unless you are very... Uh, um, agile, yeah. Your system is very nimble and agile, and you, you act very fast. Uh, I know that you say that the law has advanced, but legal re reform we find that uh, is the slowest among reforms um, because you have to really get into whose rights. You know, you're not infringing in, in this right if you were to implement this law, which we can understand. So I'm going the other way that is getting every Malaysian adult to be protected. Yeah. So uh, regardless whether you are where is which sector you are working at the lowest level or what we call the social protection floor, uh, that's what the IMO call it, social protection floor, you are covered. Every Malaysian adult who reach the age of mm, 15, it depends on, that's a, a subject to debate, 15 or 18, yeah, you are in the social protection net. I think if you, you know, I, I, I had it, uh, my article is in NST and also Banama yeah, few, uh, last week talking about this, that um, um, the desire or the aspiration should be. Uh, um, so the, the labor market issue is the second level, yeah, Usha? The, yeah. the labor market issue is, the, and, and Renuka as well, the second la the, the labor market issue is the second layer of income already, yeah? So the first layer has to be every Malaysian. The second layer, uh, you work on that. But at least on the very basic that every Malaysian is protected, just like our health system, yeah? Our health system is universal. So at the primary level, at the most basic level, for as long as you have the identity card, you have the my card, you can go to any government hospital. Yeah? Yeah, perfect, but perfect. you want to get the more sophisticated, then you pay for it or you want to wait. Ah, if you want to wait for a government hospital, okay, I should prof, stop. Prof, yeah. uh, sure. prof, prof Dato, I understand. Definitely, we will look into Malaysia's um, issues first. But I'm trying to look at it as a win-win situation, whereby uh, the migrant market, who maybe are, we are hosting, you know, for refugee or whatever status, that we can um, this sector can be economically productive for Malaysia. Uh, in that sense, you know, a win-win situation, um, not to override Malaysia's entitlement, first preference or first priority, or you know, securities of Malaysians. Uh, Indeed, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you so much for your comment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Usha, the, the, uh, um, it's not that they are, they will be contributing. They are already contributing. They are already contributing. You know the the fact that we have this growth, this level of growth in the country is also the work of migrant workers. If if there were, there are no mates, how can Malaysian women go out? And uh, I'm, uh, actually, I'm focusing more on the uh, refugee. I mean, like the ones with the. Uh, United yeah, Nations uh, HR ticket, you know, some of them got constraints. Yes. Uh, in terms of employment, you know. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, 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 I, I understand. Yeah. 
So okay. I think, uh, um, yeah, we should we should work along the, uh, 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 with you, yeah, on those issues as well, yeah. Um, yeah, please talk to us, then maybe, then we can also support you. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Dato. So I think that we already have uh, two potential um, research collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it looks very exciting here at the moment. Yes. Um, okay, we welcome the floor to any other questions uh, you all have for Prof. Dato. Um, any other perspectives, any other insights? I'm opening the floor to anyone else. Okay, so I think the Prof. Dato, there's not much here. Prof. Dato, mm -hmm. I, I would like to ask for the benefit of um, every researcher here as well, um, not necessarily those who are in the um, social protection research area as well. Um, could you share with us, uh, you have very rich experience. You come, uh, you have worked in the prime minister's department. Uh, you deal with a lot of international collaborators. You know, you, you have done, uh, you, you have looked through a lot of policy documents and uh, it's about being relevant, staying relevant at the current time. Um, and when you are relevant, you could make impact. Uh, Prof. Dato, could you share with us what are some of the uh, interesting trends uh, that you have observed that is worth attention to and worth doing research at this current time? Um, oh, gosh. Oh, well, that's a lot. I mean, that, that is uh, going beyond our area. Is, is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yes, Prof. Dr. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. For your insights, yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, uh, certainly uh, social protection, there are a lot of things there, including the labour market, looking at skills, you know. Um, I have a colleague who's looking at the, um, um, uh, no, I'm trying to recall what Dr. Yon Chen Chen is working on now that I, I took got her to, to work on. And I also got Dr. Um, Dr. Tiru, yeah, the Deputy Dean of, uh, of the Arts Faculty to also work on one project with me. Um, he is looking at the impact of minimum wage on the economy, uh, no, on employment, mm -hmm. on employment and the economy. Uh, we're working with uh, another researcher in Australia, another economist in Australia. Uh, um, uh, what is his name? Um, yeah, he'll be giving he'll give, be giving a lecture soon. Um, uh, Martin O'Brien, um, and uh, uh, yeah, so that um, and so so in the labor market too. There's a lot, so there can be unemployment. There can be the, on the economic side of it. Yeah, <clears throat> the economics of uh, social welfare and social insurance. I mean, our pension system. Our, uh, in fact, uh, um, the area that um, I am uh, um, planning uh, to work on. I've got some economists uh, thinking about this. Is the um, our pension funds? Yeah, the pension funds. Whether um, is it sustainable? I mean, we do have one or two papers already uh, uh, at the center. Yeah. Um, but more can be done looking at our pension funds. We have the EPF, we have QAP, yeah? uh, LTAT, for instance, whether this is enough or, uh, or um, aside from looking into the retirement and pension uh, uh, scheme. Now, the other uh, aspect that I think um, that we should uh, uh, look at is the issue on sustainability. Yeah? Mm. Uh, the issue on sustainability that um, which is gaining um, because at the rate we are going, uh, um, uh, it is definitely not sustainable in terms of uh, us as a planet. Yeah. So how do we contribute, uh, uh, Malaysia? Yeah. How do we contribute to that uh, um, goal? Yeah. Of being more sustainable and our economy. Yeah. The the current uh, economic trend that we are facing. Yeah. Um, and and uh, with the crisis, I think crisis should serve as a lesson to us, uh, not just with regards to social protection, but as an economy, yeah? Um, that um, in terms of food, food supply, food production, you know, is the current agricultural policy that we have um, is sustainable for the future, yeah? mm -hmm. that our food products, even our essentials are uh, imported, yeah, our food bill is very high. <coughs> so, um, 
how do we encourage uh, um, agricultural <clears throat> production to be um, lucrative and to have more skilled and technology uh, uh, get, uh, um, get into that. And I think um, for the scientists, I think they have a lot. I mean, engineering and all that um, has to, uh, um, to work together with the social scientists. Yeah? For instance, uh, migrant workers, um, um, on one hand, um, if they are skilled, uh, we don't have those in the country, we can invite them. But uh, um, for the low, uh, uh, the routine work, you know, do we continue to invite them <clears throat> or do we upgrade our technology? If we upgrade the technology, where do we get that technology from? It's not coming from other countries. Yeah. yeah. So it should be organic. It should be, uh, um, you know, worked within the system. Of course, there can be a fusion of technology. Yeah. To work on our plantations uh, uh, and all that. But um that's one area that we should go to because it ties in with the ESG, yeah? The ESG, the social aspect of it, yeah? For as long as we have uh, um, uh, foreign workers in our country, we're always going to be subject to these issues because um, uh, the issues in their country, um, uh, we can't solve. And for, uh, for them to come here, we take the easy way out, going through agents and all that but they don't have the means for them to go without the agent and we do not understand their culture to go and uh, uh, source direct from this country. So we are forever going to, to uh, uh, face this. Now that reminded me when um, many years ago, more than a decade ago, when we had a visit from the former um, prime minister of Finland, yeah, uh, who came to Malaysia and when we were sharing with him on our aspiration with the new economic model. That was what we were working on for our growth strategy for Malaysia. He said, um, I can't help no noticing this. You know, he didn't use that, that the kind of sarcastic words. He said, um, you, still, you still pick your oil palm um, manually, you know, but he was showing. So, you know, we were like surprised by the question. Then we, um, and he said, and yet you have been planting oil palms since the 1970s, yeah? So um, then we researched about Finland. Finland is an agricultural country, forestry, and they have about 4 million population. But we noticed that from our research, it shows that right from the falling of the trees, the, sorry, the felling of the trees, it's all mechanized, you know. Mm -hmm. They start getting the tree to fall, start to, to get it processed and all that, and then they, they transport it out, yeah. So it's not physically trying to go and cut the trees, bring to the, like we do, yeah. we bring to the wherever and start sowing phys physically, mm -hmm. all mechanized. Because they only have 4 million population. Of course, you, uh, you also know, for some of you who have been to Finland, they also get some foreign workers that come in. Yeah? But majority of the work is already, yeah? the majority of the work is already done by machines. Yeah? So I think this is what they meant. That I know that now, I mean, I could see the initiatives, yeah, the Sangabi and all that working with UITM. I think that's the latest looking at how they can mechanize some of the oil palm production and all that. But um, maybe 30 years ago, we didn't think about this. Yeah, when we think mm. about uh, going industry, we thought about competing with the West, you know building this and that, it's okay. Uh, building this and that will develop our people to think how to build machines, how to build cars. But from cars, we should be able to expand into uh, building robots and what have you for our plantations, for our, I don't know whether rubber can be done machine as well, not sure. But I think this is uh, the area that I think some of our science um, people can work um, uh, with the social science to see, you know, how can we make uh, um, this world more sustainable, less affecting uh, social and human rights. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, there are, there are a lot of work. But I think um, you, need, uh, you need someone who has that kind of uh, thinking that is not just siloed, but who can link 
with the different um, uh, uh, different aspects, and he or she is the sifu. And mm. then you get the others to work on the, the various aspects and to raise that level of research to the more uh, um, national, you know, of the quality uh, that I talked about. Yeah. Wonderful sharing, Prof. Dato. Um, I think that is something that is very relatable. What, what is quite interesting is that the people from Finland who visited us uh, seems to know what we are doing. Uh, so the, the, the question is, uh, uh, do, do we know what is actually happening out there? Or uh, are we still confined to our own spaces and trying to address national agenda when we could also learn uh, from others out there and try to apply uh, what they have learned? Like what you mentioned, Prof. Dato, throughout the sharing this morning, it's about sharing and exchanging knowledge. You know, what I can give you and what do I receive in return? So I think that that is a very important success formula in, 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 in the research field. Uh, Prof. Can, I, can, can I add, Donnie, one please more? Please go ahead. To the young researchers, yeah. yeah. Also, um, please experience firsthand, as I want to extend what Donnie was saying, doing yeah. more what's happening out there when we do research. Do we just get our RAs to go or do we go ourselves? You have to go. You have to go. Because if you go, only then you appreciate what is mm. the issue. So when you are writing, when you you are assisting uh, um, uh, or you are writing, then you you appreciate the deeper problem, and and when you write, that's when you write with passion, yeah. But if you don't go, you don't. Because uh, scientists they work with their hands, so they see and they write. They see, yeah. We social scientists we have to go to the ground. Uh, um, uh, so go with your RAs. I mean, you don't have to go all the time, but go and feel, yeah. Um, I mean, when we were doing Malaysia Aging Retirement Survey, of course, I don't go to Sabah, Sarawak with some of my colleagues are here listening. Also, I saw some of the names. Tandi Yong is here. And um, Dr. Halimah is my co-principal uh, investigator on the Mars project and all that. I don't go to uh, Sabah, Sarawak. Dr. Halimah would go. But I would go to the ones because we also, uh, uh, the research also go here within Slangor. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, uh, go uh, to at least go down and see uh, for yourself uh, some of this so that um, when when you write, you know what you're writing about. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. Dato, for that very important tip. Uh, Prof. Dato, could you share with us throughout your career, um, especially for us uh, young aspiration researchers, uh, could you share with us uh, what, are, uh, what are the sort of challenges that uh, you have encountered that is worth for us to take note of? and a uh, word for us to uh, probably learn from uh, such uh, established researchers such as yourself. Can you share with us, Prof. Dato? Disappointments, rejections, yeah. Um, of course, um, uh, when you are young, your work is not up to that level yet. I, I don't know, maybe others don't, didn't go through what I went through. I did, I went through the hard way as well, you know. Uh, um, some of our... Um, uh, edit reviewers, yeah. Some of the reviewers, either you're writing for books or you're writing for journals, you know, they're very direct, they're very nasty. Yeah? Um, don't don't be disheartened. Don't be disheartened. Um, improve on it, yeah. Um, get some of the senior people to support you. Yeah. How do you improve on this research to go for a higher uh, um, uh, level of journal? Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you, uh, yeah, and, and that's how you improve. But if you give up, if you give up, you know, I mean, you, you get the first rejection. Usually they don't reject without giving you any feedback. Yeah, um, the, the academic community, though they are cruel, but they're also kind. They, they will give you a lot of input. So follow the input. And then if you don't understand the input, go and discuss with another colleague or go to someone senior to you and, and talk. What does, he, what does he, he or she mean by this, you know? Uh, yeah, so um, that, and then um, when I, I first got back with my PhD, we were fortunate because uh, that's what I said by going to the ground, yeah? So when I do socioeconomic work, I used to go to the poor areas, yeah, like Tumpat, um, you know, and, and some places in Kelantan because uh, we had the advantage of the UNDP uh, uh, funds, yeah? It was a small fund those, those years, but enough 
for us to support for our traveling. I mean, for some of us, some of you, I think the work, the nature of your mm. work, maybe literature, but you don't need to go to the ground like we do. We, we are social scientists, we have to go on the ground. Yeah. So, so we had to do that. So we did experience that. So if you don't come from that background, of course, I came from that background as well. Yeah, mm. I came from background of very rural, very poor, very uh, 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 humble background. Yeah. So if you have not, not experienced that, then doing this field work, going to really poor areas. Yeah. Um, so uh, when we were doing uh, uh, our um, community service, talking about Blanjawanku, we went to a flat where, but fortunately, it wasn't smelly. Yeah. Uh, but I've been to smelly flats as well, yeah. So, um, so uh, this is the uh, the challenges that you will have to to do as a researcher, yeah. Um, uh, how what else? Uh, a government uh, uh, not you know not wanted to listen. Uh, no, that's not the right word. Like um, um, not even allowing allowing you to finish your sentence or whatever. You know, I mean, this is normal. This is normal. Please don't take it personally. It's not because they don't like you, <laughs> but because uh, time is limited. They want you to go straight to the point. point. So when you reach my age, then you know that um, when you talk to certain group, when you talk to policymakers, if you have three things that you have to say up front, you have to say, these are the three things I want to say. Only then you give the explanation. But if you go and give your preamble half an hour, they switch off already. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, so it depends on which uh, uh, sector or which group uh, you are addressing, then you have to be, but I think with time, yeah, you will know who to address. Um, uh, and as you grow older, uh, I know that the young researchers will always think that, oh, government is like, you know, they are the black balls. So it's true, it's a mess. They themselves is a mess, huh? uh, uh, and you cannot just you. <laughs> they also, you know, things are overlapping, you know, and all that. But um, if you are, you are wise in how you do understand that they too are facing constraints. Yeah, they are also, uh, uh, they are not uh, operating in vacuum. They are also oper operating in a very political environment. Huh? Political, that's not mean political parties only. Yeah, things get politicized. That's what I mean. Mm. Um, so uh, they 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 too have to be careful. Yeah. So that is why um, you know straight to the point. Have the data, the evidence that you need. Um, be calm when you talk. And um, and and the other thing is also is to be passionate. Yeah. About what you do. So, but sometimes passion uh, uh, come with emotion. Mm. Yeah. So when you're talking about something you're passionate, you can get really emotion and fired up when when uh, you know uh, uh, when someone address you. But but please uh, remember this. Sometimes when people question you or um, or criticize you, it's not because they don't like what you are saying, but it's because they want to know more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has to be from that. Um, perspective, okay. then you are you appreciate their question. Mm. You appreciate their question and ask uh, which aspect of it that is not clear, for instance. Yeah. So it's not that they want to criticize you or they don't they they want to belittle you or undermine you, but because they, they want to understand because they are it's not uh, it's not clear. Thank you, uh, Prof. Dato. I think that is a very, very important tip there. Prof. Dato, uh, could you share with us some insights? I, I'm very sure that throughout your research journey, you would have uh, come across people. Uh, one of your tips was to work with senior researchers, to work with more established figures. But what happens if uh, there are some instances where uh, instead of people helping you, they see you as a threat? Um, they, they, they see that uh, potentially that you could outgrow them in the few years and and so in in that case it's best for me not to assist this person so what what do we do in those uh, kind of instances because we we do encounter such instances especially in in our society where people want to remain relevant um, so what will be your advice for this kind of situation that should be the way isn't it i mean as professors as lecturers you want your students to be better than you mm. yeah so if people who are working with us, they are better than us after this, that means we have done our work. 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, I don't think um, you will be irrelevant. Uh, uh, you may be talking about other issues and other people are talking about other issues. Um, um, uh, j- just like everything, don't be afraid of competition. Don't, don't think that, um, for instance, if in a new center is established, we are, you know, we, we are working with them. Yeah, we, we are also working with Professor Shamsul's uh, uh, outfit, for instance. I um, can't remember what it's called now. Um, uh, uh, and we get them as a resource. Yeah, because I think when you establish, you know what is your focus areas. Of course, you will have your sub areas. Yes, I mean, like us uh, with UAC, yeah, the um, uh, Center for Uncle Aziz Center for Development. Uh, there are some overlaps, but that's okay. The overlap would further enrich the whatever mm. ideas and research that you are doing. Yeah, um, so we work together, and 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 in our case, we are not worried that we are irrelevant. Um, mm. There are always new issues to work on. If we know that someone is working and on that issue, we, we are moving on. We're not working on that issue anymore. Let's work on other things. Yeah. So, um, for instance, um, okay, we have my aging. Yeah. Uh, um, at UPM. Yeah. Uh, they, they started as gerontology and then they go into some other areas as well. But they're quite science based. Yeah. So ours are more employment, economic, social protection. So we know what are our um, priorities or our focus areas. Yeah. But by all means, uh, Donny, if I know that um, uh, our partner has done better than us or has grown and, and doing better, which they are. Yeah. Some of our researchers, young researchers who came in and then they get uh, um, better jobs, we encourage them. That, that's good mm. because that shows that we are a good training ground for people to move on. Yeah. So uh, that, that's our job. Thank you, Prof. Dato. Very enlightening to, to, to hear that perspective, um, especially for uh, young career researchers and those who are you know, intending to build a career for the long term. Uh, Prof. Dato Noma, uh, one final question for you. And I, I think that this is quite a pertinent question. Uh, I think not personally for me and for the benefit of all our audience uh, this morning. If there is few things that you could change in your early career days, a mm-hmm. uh, few things that you could do differently, what will that be? Could you share with us? Um, hmm. Interesting. I, I, I somehow I enjoyed the journey. Yeah, I enjoyed the journey. I'm happy where I am. Um, if, I, if I had more time, I wanted to, to, to learn law. I mean, to, do, to know about the, uh, the legal side of things. Yeah, um, yeah I, 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 I think it's, it's, it's journey well-traveled. Yeah? Journey well-traveled. <laughs> to me, I mean, I felt that I had... Uh, I, I, and I, I learned from those experiences. I made mistakes in the past as well. I made mistakes. I, uh, well, I, I, I thought I learned from it. Maybe I didn't. Um, and, and going forward, I also look forward um, to the next phase, yeah, where um, I work with young researchers, uh, work with policymakers, um, and, and um, participate in the um, discussions that can be uh, richer, uh, um, and and more um, useful for the for the society, yeah. So uh, that that's what I I would say, yeah. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, you wouldn't do anything differently, probably. Yeah. You you seems to be uh, uh, very content with uh, how your career has panned out, and I think that um, many of us will like to have a similar career path as you, and uh, perhaps do better. As what Prof Noma you uh, rightly mentioned is always looking about doing better. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, my, my ambition when I was young was to be a professor, and to me, uh, being a professor is the the ultimate. You know, um, the rest is um, the rest um, is again is situational. Yeah, if if you have the opportunity, uh, then you should. But if you don't, uh, uh, being professor, being a professor, is 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 a lot. It's a lot, and and it's going to be. I the some of the professors that I'm working with at the center, you know, like the Japanese professors and all that, and yet they're in their seventies, and they're still active. 
Mm. And we're looking at the the third demographic dividend, yeah, the demographic benefit that you get, yeah. The first demographic benefit is when your population growth started to shrink. Therefore, you have less people that's dependent, but more people in the working population that's, that you create the growth. Yeah, that's the first demographic dividend. The second demographic dividend is from the investment that you have put in and then you get the return. The third is from the silver, from the uh, how you have invested in, in, in those who are uh, beyond retirement age, that if you can get the... Um, dividend from that, then it will benefit the country. And for many countries, it's not an option. It's something that they have to work on because of the aging population. They're faster than us for some of the developed countries. So that's why you see that people in their 70s and all that, they're still working. And especially professors, you know, because uh, I think you all are, they have been, I, I, no, I'm not sure whether this is scientifically proven, yeah? But the la latest um, uh, social media that I get is that the most productive age is at the age of number one. Yeah? The, first, the most productive is 60 to 70. The second productive is 50 to 60. And the third productive is 70 to 80. So, you know, cognitive wise. So <clears throat> I um, uh, if, if that's the, the, you know, is scientifically proven, then uh, we have a lot to benefit uh, uh, as, as the population gets older. Thank you very much, Prof. Dato. So I would like to just summarize Prof. Dato. I think he has been an extremely insightful sharing uh, from the morning to now. Um, and I think that looking at our team about making impact through research, there were a lot of golden tips that were shared by uh, Prof. Dato to all of us. So allow me to recap uh, for the benefit of everyone. And uh, Prof. Dato, you could add in if I were to miss out anything important. So I think one of the first thing that was mentioned by uh, Prof. Dato was about um, you making uh, voices heard. You, you make your voice heard in the field. And uh, sometimes a personal voice is not enough. Um, you need to have many voices, as what was uh, mentioned by Prof. Dato. And in terms of having many voices, there is a need to collaborate um, locally and internationally, find commonalities across in the community of research that you are doing. Uh, and I think that in terms of uh, making an impact uh, through government policies, uh, probably there is uh, even a need to maybe repeat a uh, few things uh, so that, that that voice and that um, that uh, information gets carried across. Um, you have, your research has to be data-driven. It has to be based on facts. Um, so whenever that you pitch something, um, it has to be centered around data-driven and it has to be centered around facts. It's quite important that um, if you want to make your research um, impactful, um, there is a need to do some form of comparative analysis uh, between um, local and international research so that you could benchmark uh, where is your research in terms of uh, the impact uh, locally as well as internationally? And uh, perhaps in that way, we could gain added attention uh, from funders and uh, from the parties that is involved. Um, also, Prof. Dato mentioned that there is a need for uh, collaboration between social sciences and sciences. Um, so perhaps we are looking at a multidisciplinary kind of research uh, where we could collaborate and we can see how could one uh, field of study benefit the other field of study and how we can work together. So we are, work, we are moving towards the era of multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary. And here, I think one of the most important tips that was mentioned by Prof. Dato is when we do research, is uh, quite important to have that immersion experience. Um, so yes, we are given research fundings and uh, in that research fundings, there is uh, allocations even for research assistance. But uh, instead of asking the research assistants to do all the work in the ground, um, we ourselves need to go to the ground uh, so that we are able to gain firsthand experience. So that I think one of the crucial tips in uh, by Prof. Dato is that so that when we pitch our research, you know, we are able to relate to the realities from the ground and not just realities from the uh, literature. And Prof. Dato also have mentioned about emotions. So along the way, we need to be prepared uh, for disappointments. We need to be prepared for rejections. And most importantly is how do we connect to this disappointment and rejections? Most importantly, how do we handle uh, disappointment and rejections? This has to do with the emotions that we have, the feelings that we have. And one thing that uh, Prof. Dato mentioned was to always remain calm. 
so perhaps at that moment, uh, emotions is quite high and um, we just have to calm down and to see that what we could do uh, uh, and how can we uh, improve uh, what has been um, communicated in terms of disappointment and rejection to us. And to touch on this uh, disappointment and rejection, uh, Prof. Dato has also mentioned about the uh, importance of collaborating with senior researchers. So perhaps um, some things that has gone wrong, or there are uh, some things that was not strong enough, and there's a need to get some added expertise, especially from senior research fellows. So perhaps we could discuss, we could collaborate with senior research fellows and see that how our ideas could be um, extended forward and how can it be expanded to become more impactful and more relevant. And I think that another point that was mentioned by Prof. Dato is about when you communicate with uh, very important people, especially dealing with the governments and uh, dealing with very important agency, it's quite important to be straight to the point, uh, not to go around the bush and, and, and you know, talk about all irrelevant stuff because as what uh, Prof. Dato mentions, their time is very important, their time is limited. So we need to go straight to the point. What is the point that you want to say and pitch it out straight to a point so that you gain their immediate attention. And uh, uh, one of the second last point that was mentioned by Prof. Dato, do not be afraid of competition. Um, so there are maybe there are people who are doing better than us. There are people who are doing the same field of us but it's about looking at opportunities to, to collaborate and to build on each other's strength rather than uh, competing with one another. Uh, Prof. Dato also mentioned there is an important to establish a focus area. So you want to make an impact in the community, you want to impact, make an impact in your research. It's very important to establish a focus area, a strong focus area. And this is very much related to our passion. So we need to be passionate in what we are doing um, so that when we are passionate, it could be seen in our emotion, it could be seen in our work, and we can be seen in our activity as what has uh, we have seen from Prof. Natonoma uh, throughout this morning that she was passionate when she was delivering about the research center, the activities, the establishment, and what she's doing in the community and in what she's doing in terms of uh, research impact, we can see that she was passionate. So we feel your energy, uh, Prof. Natonoma, and uh, I think that um, this is one thing that we have learned and we thank you very much. Uh, Prof. Dato, would you like to add anything uh, that I've missed out uh, from the recap about impact in research? No, you were very, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were very good. I didn't realize that you were, you know, taking notes and everything is covered there, Donnie. You, you've done a wonderful job. Uh, no, if there's anything um, that I, I could add, I would say that, um, I, uh, I enjoy this interaction, yeah, uh, um, and we, we all start from somewhere. We all start from somewhere. It doesn't matter where we start from. What's important is the, gen the journey, yeah? So enjoy every bit of it. Uh, uh, don't lose heart. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and uh, um, I, I think it is also uh, important to think that um, when, when you, whatever you do, even when you're writing, yeah, to always remind yourself, what is it that you want to say here? Yeah. Mm. Uh, and to think that people are interested in what you want to say. Yeah. So it's good to know your audience, even when you're writing, you're writing your article. Yeah. Who will be the readers? Yeah. So um, then, then you will, uh, that's where you, you, it is distinctive. Yeah. So your work is, is distinguished from other people because they can feel you there when they are, you know, reading your work. And all. It, it is not so easy when you are younger because you are, you know, you don't understand your audience. But uh, if I, you can get the one advice that I would give, which I wish I had when I was younger, is to when you are writing, is not to describe to yourself. It's not. Don't don't describe to yourself. <laughs> You are describing to someone. Uh, mm. So you're analyzing for someone. Yeah. So try to see who is that someone and, and write the way or, or speak the way that you think the other person would understand. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, which I didn't when I was younger. You know, when you're writing, you're just like writing for everybody, <laughs> you know, or for yourself. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, it, it's good to know your audience uh, and, 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 um, think that they want to listen to what you have to say. Uh, they want to read to what you want to, that you are going to write. Then, then you, you write well. 
you will speak well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Prof. Dato. So I think that is one very final important point uh, to round up our discussion this morning is uh, when we do research, always keep the audience in mind. Uh, where even when you have webinars like this, uh, when you do research papers, when you write research books, um, always keep the audience in mind and, and prepare accordingly and uh, so that they are able to relate to you. And most importantly, you are able to make an impact um, along the way. Because if you can relate to the audience, there is an impact by itself there. Okay, um, so Prof. Dato, I could see in the chat uh, is going viral at the moment. There are many thank you messages to you. Um, and I think that a lot of the uh, insights that you have shared this morning has been particularly beneficial to all our audience. So we thank you very much, uh, Prof. Dato, for your time. And uh, we would like to invite all our participants here. Uh, if you would like to turn on your camera and uh, take a very nice uh, photo with uh, Prof. Dato now, um, so that, you know, if you're lucky, your photo can be just beside uh, Prof. Dato. Um, I, <laughs> I can give you a tips for Zoom. No, you, you, can dis you can disconnect and come back and maybe if you're lucky, you are right beside Prof. Dato. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Johnny, and thank you, Adat, for, for the opportunity, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Dato, okay. yeah. Okay, so you're just waiting for the rest. And uh, while you're waiting, um, EDEC has also posted some very important messages. Um, there is a link to the attendance form. Uh, there's a link to the feedback form as well. Uh, so that needs your attention as well. Um, you can always do that once we have taken this uh, photo session. Right, so we're just giving some time uh, for everyone to turn on your camera before we take a nice photo. So I'm sure that if we have a physical session, um, everyone is going to grab a seat beside you, Prof. Dato, and probably I'll be disappearing towards the end. You know, so, but uh, I, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, we have a Zoom here, okay? So that everyone gets an equal coverage. We don't have to know who's the front and the back row. Okay, so are we ready to take a photo? Okay, so yeah, we see you, Dr. Usha, Dr. Renuka, okay? So let's take a nice photo, okay, Adek, uh, maybe you can help us to take a snapshot, yeah? Yeah, okay. Um, keep smiling because there is two page, so <laughs> I'll snap the picture. Okay, one, two, three. All right, keep smiling. All right. Um, can you hold on for a while? Okay, another picture for page one. You're not sure where you are, so just keep smiling. <laughs> Do you want to give a All thumbs right, up? One, two, three. Sorry? Do you want to give a thumbs up? Maybe give a thumbs up to Prof. Dato and say that this has been an excellent webinar. Uh, so we give yeah. a thumbs up and a big smile so that Prof. Dato knows that, you know, she's... Uh, She's, she has to come for the next webinar when we invite. <laughs> All right, another one. One, two, three. All right, I can see a lot of smiling face. All right, thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Prof. Dato, thank you thank once you, again. Thank you, and you have a good day. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Monday, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Prof. Okay, Dato. Okay. Yeah, okay. Have, have a good week. Uh, have, uh, stay safe, most importantly. Uh, stay yes. healthy and uh, take care of yourself, Prof. Dato. Yeah? We okay, hope to you. engage you again in another round of webinar. Thank you, Prof. Dato. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. okay thank thank you, everyone, to all our participants also as well. Thank you for joining us and we will see you in the next uh, uh, webinar. Yeah? So thank you to EDEC also as well for organizing this wonderful webinar and this platform for us. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye, bro.